Hi everyone, and welcome back to the CAD CAM Course YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to model this clevis, a fastener and coupling device used in many assemblies. As always, we'll break the entire model into simple, easy to follow steps. And to make things easier, I've also prepared a step-by-step -step PDF guide. You'll find the download link in the video description. Before we dive in, this is a great time to pause the video and try modeling it yourself. And if you get stuck, no worries, just come back, press play and follow along step-by-step. All right, let's begin. Our very first step will be to create that 2D profile sketch. We'll sketch just half of the shape and then use the Revolve tool to turn it into a 3D solid. So first, let's switch to the Part Design Workbench in FreeCAD. On the toolbar, click Create New Sketch. FreeCAD will now ask you to select a plane for the sketch. Choose the XZ plane. All right, we're now inside the sketch. Let's begin shaping the basic profile. First, grab the Circle tool. Click on the origin point to set the center, drag outward, and set the diameter to 100 millimeters, then press enter. With the circle tool still active, let's add a second circle. This time use some point on the vertical axis as the center, drag outward, and set its diameter to 60 millimeters. Now for spacing between these two circles, grab the dimension tool, select the two circle centers, and enter a distance of 120 millimeters. Now let's connect them with a tangent line. Select the line tool and draw a rough line between the circles. Doesn't need to touch them. Hold control, select the line and the smaller circle and apply the tangent constraint. Do the same with the line and the larger circle. Now the line is tangent to both circles. Next, grab the line tool again and draw a vertical line along the central axis, crossing both circles. The overall profile is now taking shape. Let's clean things up. Select the Trim tool, and remove all the extra arcs and lines inside and outside, so that you're left with just half of the profile. At this point, the sketch looks correct, but it isn't fully constrained yet. If you try moving the vertical line, it still shifts, so let's lock it in place. Hold Control, select the vertical line and the origin point, and apply the coincident constraint. The sketch is now fully constrained. Let's close the sketch and turn this into a 3D solid. Click on the Revolve tool. Set the axis of revolution to the vertical sketch axis. Enter an angle of 360 degrees and click OK. And there we have it, the core body of the clevis is created. Step one is now complete. In the next step, we're going to cut out the slot at the bottom portion of the clevis. The width of this slot is 40 millimeters. Back in FreeCAD, click on the Create New Sketch tool and select the front plane, which is the XZ plane. A new sketch is now active. To get a better view, click on the View Section tool. This slices the model, allowing us to clearly see the sketch plane inside the body. Now grab the Rectangle tool and draw a rough rectangle. Place it roughly symmetric around the vertical axis and extend it approximately down to the bottom of the body. Next, let's add the constraints. First, we'll make the rectangle symmetric. Hold Control, select both corner vertices along with the vertical axis, and then click the Symmetric Constraint tool. Now we need to constrain the bottom line of the rectangle. For this, activate the External Geometry tool and select the bottom circular edge of the body. This brings it into the sketch as a reference. Hold Control, select the rectangle's bottom line and the circular reference line, and apply a tangency constraint. Next, use the Dimension tool to set the rectangle's width to 40 millimeters. Then add another dimension from the top line of the rectangle to the origin point, and set this to 50 millimeters. At this point, the entire rectangle sketch has turned green, meaning it is fully constrained and ready for use. Close the sketch. With it selected, click the Pocket tool. In the Pocket parameters, check the option Symmetric to Plane. For the pocket type, select Through All. The slot is now created successfully. Click OK to confirm. And that completes this step. The next step is to remove material from both sides of the clevis head, leaving just a 30 millimeter thickness in the center. To do this, we'll first create a reference plane. Go to the toolbar and select Create a Datum Plane. In the Datum Plane parameters, under References, 
select the outer cylindrical body. This will align the plane along the XY plane. Now adjust the attachment offset in the Z direction by 15 millimeters and click OK. We now have a reference plane positioned 15 millimeters away from the central XY plane. Next, select this new plane and click Create Sketch. You'll notice the model flips, so rotate the view as needed. For clarity, let's also hide the datum plane from visibility for now. Now we need to define the cut. Since the material removal is circular, we'll use the top curved portion as a reference. Activate the external geometry tool and click on the top circular edge. This brings in its center point as a reference in the sketch. With that reference in place, select the circle tool, place the circle using the imported center, and set its diameter to 100 millimeters. The circle is now fully constrained. Close the sketch. With the sketch selected, click Pocket in the Pocket Parameters. Increase the depth. You'll notice the cut is moving in the wrong direction, so check the reversed option and set the pocket type to Through All. Click OK and the material is removed. Instead of repeating the same on the other side, we'll use the Mirror tool. In the Model Tree, select the Pocket feature and click on Mirror. In the Mirror parameters, change the Mirror Plane to the Base XZ Plane and confirm with OK. The pocket is now mirrored to the opposite side. The next step is to add a hole to the top portion of the head. Back in FreeCAD, select the face from which we want to drill the hole and click on Create New Sketch. To make sketching easier, click on the View Section tool. Now we need a reference point for the hole center. Use the External Geometry tool and select one of the top curves. This brings the center point into the sketch as a reference. Next, grab the Circle tool, place the center on that reference point, and drag out a circle. Set its diameter to 30 millimeters. The sketch is now fully constrained. Close the sketch. Then click on the Pocket tool. In the Pocket parameters, change the type to Through All, and confirm by clicking OK. The hole is now created, and this step is complete. The next step is to add the bottom hole. This hole passes completely through the model from one side to the other. So let's start by creating a datum plane. Click on the Create Datum Plane tool. By default, the new plane is aligned with the XY plane, but in this case, we need it to be parallel to the YZ plane and positioned at the extreme end of the solid. Rotate the model and choose the interface of the slot. This gives us a plane aligned with the correct orientation. However, right now, the plane sits on the interface. We need it at the extreme right to move it. Now, let's calculate the offset. The slot has a total width of 40 millimeters, so this face is already 20 millimeters from the central axis. The radius of the bottom circular portion is 50 millimeters. That means we need to move the plane an additional 30 millimeters to reach the extreme edge. So in the offset settings, increase the Z offset to 30 millimeters. If the plane moves in the opposite direction, simply enable flip sides and set the offset to 30 millimeters again. Now the datum plane is correctly placed. Let's create a new sketch on this plane. Select the plane in the model tree and click Create New Sketch. And then hide the datum plane. Next, use the External Geometry tool to bring in the center point of the bottom circular arc. Then with the Circle tool, draw a circle using both the reference point and the origin as the center. Set the diameter to 30 millimeters. The sketch is now fully constrained. Close the sketch. With the sketch still selected, click the Pocket tool. In the Pocket parameters, set the type to Through All and Confirm. The next step is to create a counterbore hole on top of the hole we just made. Since both holes are concentric, we'll use the same reference plane as before. So from the model tree, select the datum plane and create a new sketch on it. Reorient the model for a clear view, then grab the circle tool. 
Click the origin point as the center. Drag out a circle and set its diameter to 50 millimeters. Once the circle is fully constrained, close the sketch. Now in the Part Design Workbench, with the sketch selected, click on the Pocket tool. In the Pocket Parameters, choose Dimension as the type, and set the depth to 15 millimeters. Click OK. And the counterbore is created on one side. We still need the same feature on the opposite side, but instead of repeating all the steps, we'll mirror it. So select the counterbore pocket from the Model Tree, and click on the Mirror tool. In the mirror parameters, choose base YZ plane as the mirror plane. Click OK. And the counterbore is mirrored perfectly to the other side that completes this step. The next step is to apply fillets to all the sharp edges so the model looks smooth. To do that, click on the fillet tool. When the fillet tool opens, carefully select all the independent edges that need to be filleted. Rotate the model as needed to change the view orientation, so you can also select the inner edges. Once all the edges are selected, set the fillet radius to 3 millimeters, then click OK. And that's it! Our 3D model is now complete. As the final step, you can export this model as an STL file and send it to your 3D printer. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss upcoming lessons. If you'd like to support my work and help me continue making high quality free CAD tutorials, consider buying me a coffee on Ko-fi. Your support, no matter how small, goes a long way in helping me dedicate more time to creating detailed, beginner-friendly content for this community. You'll find the Kofi link in the description below. Thank you for your support. It truly means a lot.